And um, as we were as we were meditating, you know, the the one thing that came about in the meditation is about the power of pure thoughts that it builds up on it. So in a way, when we think about um, the idea of pure, um, what is it that one would define as pure? And, uh, you know, in, in general, if you read on a label something saying pure, then you think it's only made up of that. So if it's 100% pure apple juice and you only expect there to be apples inside. And so when I'm thinking about pure referring to me, what would I be thinking about? What would be my uh, point of conclusion that the thoughts I'm thinking about me are pure? And so it would really then be who I really am. And so that's something very nice for us to uh, unpack in terms of uh, do I really feel and accept me as I am meant to be without the additions, without the frills, without the paraphernalia that uh, generally gets attached to someone's identity? And uh, perhaps this is one single thing within the whole practice of uh, spiritual journey for us to get to that point of self-discovery and self-realization. And um, even if I make a little statement that uh, I am a soul or I am a, I'm a whatever, that's just a bit of information that uh, we have. To actually know myself and be myself is perhaps the journey that we're on. And so I think it's really important for all of us to give a lot of time to get to know the self uh, that we are. Now, generally, when I want to get to know somebody, uh, we spend time with that individual, uh, go out and have coffee, go for walks, uh, find out really what it is that that individual appreciates. And as we exchange our thoughts and ideas from what they say, it becomes clearer what their values are and what it is that they appreciate and uh, are all about. So how do I do the same thing for myself to be able to make that kind of special attempt to take myself out for coffee, go for a walk and be with me so that I can unpack and um, discover that valuable qualities or the qualities that actually make me up. And so in a way, it's a, a very beautiful journey because it's not hard work. Um, it's not penance and uh, uh, creating some difficulty so that I get to know who I am. You know how they say you learn uh, when things get a bit stressful. But uh, this whole idea of um, making time to know me means uh, getting some time to, to spend and, and appreciate with yourself. So um, something that for me is really uh, beautiful is that when I think about even the words that, that come out of my mouth, because they are the things that I'm actually holding inside of me. They represent what I actually am. And then the thing that most people don't really uh, expose are the things that they think. And we know that <clears throat> we can be mindful about the words we speak, but what's happening in our minds are actually quite uh, most uh, um, definitely the, the real me that's happening or the, the me that I'm actually identifying with. But I'd like to think that actually even those things that are happening in our mind and in our words are things that we can actually have as learned behavior. And so we can even go beyond those to discover and unfold that part of me that is absolutely intrinsic. Because when I can uh, get to know myself in that real way, then the intentions that I set out for and they based on that real me, they're going to actually bear fruit instantly because it's not something that is uh, unauthentic. It's, it's the real stuff. You know, these days you can have many seeds that are um, uh, uh, genetically modified and so those seeds can give you some kind of fruit, but later they don't actually, they don't bear seeds that can actually uh, give us more plants. And 
for us in a spiritual dimension, everything that we do is unlimited. And so it actually is, the fruit of it is unlimited. And so the seed of that thought that I create for myself uh, must have a, a foundation or basis that is not depending on anything that is physical in terms of transient. So when I identify myself, um, I can look at my physical form and yes, this is a form of a female, certain age, nationality, and I can create a whole lot of different um, ways in which I can put an identity to myself. I can add to it a profession, I can do many things to it. But in the bigger picture, at the end of it, we will retire, the body won't remain the age. Uh, there'll be so many different changes that will come about but there's still something that's inside of me that's consistent. And that part of me is the being, the living energy. And so it's so vital for us that whilst we spend the majority of our time looking at what the physical needs of the body is, because if I'm saying I, then if the I is the body, then there's all the things that I do are only referring to that part of me. But when I shift my consciousness and I, I move from the human to the being, I'm also able to discover another entity that is what's moving the human. And that which is moving the human is a beautiful vibration. It's an energy. Um, the way we can even define this energy is it's invisible, but it's like magic. This beautiful energy can bring about peace, can bring about love can give you a sense of care and belonging. It can give you a sense of sustainability and power. So this energy is very beautiful. And we know that the physical presence that we have, but we all bring in a very beautiful energy that people begin to resonate with and connect with. And so one can also find this very easily when you are connecting with children who are not concerned about who you are in terms of in the world, but when you come close to them, they can either feel very comfortable with you and begin to smile and connect with you or make a big funny noise and uh, show their complete dissatisfaction and um, create chaos. So what the child is then really, um, uh, a witness of or uh, a recipient of is the vibration that I as the being give, give off. So today I want to really explore that part of ourselves so that when we begin to value that which is the unknown, but truly that which is the experiencer and giving the experience, then we'll find that what we're doing with ourselves is really investing the right kind of energy you know, there's a powerful statement that goes that wherever attention goes, that's where life grows. And so if I'm giving attention just to my body, yes, I'll definitely um, be able to do the things that will um, create good health and well-being. But the part of me that is experiencing to give it the right kind of attention is also vital in my moving forward. So to be able to um, think about myself separate from this body, I think words is not really going to get me too far. So I want to invite you into a little exercise. And for this exercise, um, I, I normally like for us to sit and meditate with our eyes open, but I'm going to invite you to actually close your eyes. And so if you can just take, find yourself in a nice a quiet spot, uh, settling down, and just for a few moments, let your eyes rest and close them. And then, and I'm going to take you on to a little journey. So like the morning program was about spaces, I'm inviting you to the Durban beachfront. And it's early in the morning, it's, it's late in the afternoon, and the sun is beautifully warm. And as we're walking, we can feel the sun behind our backs and I can feel the warmth of the sand under my feet. 
and I'm walking. And as I walk, I'm completely feeling the breeze, the energy of the evening. And I look above and I see the sky that is beautifully blue. And as I continue to walk and that sun continues to set, that beautiful blue sky becomes darker and darker. And eventually the light completely disappears. And in front of me is a dark, black velvet sky and then like magic little stars begin to pop out of this dark velvet sky and I find myself looking at these beautiful sparks of light these stars shining up above in that beautiful stillness each star completely free so beautiful absolutely radiant as my gaze goes up above it is as if i am in silence in stillness and the glow of the star completely mesmerizes me. And now I think, imagine if I was a star. So let me take that thought and make it practical. Imagine I'm up in that beautiful black velvet sky, that beautiful star twinkling in the sky completely free, completely independent. And from I, this beautiful star, I feel rays of light just naturally flowing out of me into the space. And I'm surrounded by this beautiful hue of silvery light sparkling and radiating and the rays of light that are shining from me are rays of peace gently radiating it is as if I am now floating in peace I am this light so bright so beautiful so radiant, so peaceful. My presence beautifies the sky. My presence gives light to the sky. My presence gives a feeling of enchantment and magic to all. I continue radiating as the star, free, light, beautiful, radiant. Thank you. So I'm gonna invite you to open your eyes now. And um, I'm not sure, but it would be so lovely if I could hear some responses from you. What did it feel like to be, first of all, watching the star and then becoming the star? Uh, if there is anybody that would like to perhaps unmute and share, it would be great. Otherwise, you could also just send your response in the chat. But most of the time when we uh, talk about being a soul and being light, it's just an informative thing. It's a piece of information. But when I become the star and become that light and I begin to radiate that absolute beauty, that absolute stillness, what happens is that from information, it becomes an experience. 
and this is something that is really important for us that until we can actually move into that space of being in the head and having information to actually stepping into that process of becoming. And that kind of feeling allows me to start valuing who I am because it's not coming from just an understanding. And that beautiful being of light that I am is really just a wonderful energy when you take white light and you pass it through a prism, you find that it refracts into the seven colors of the rainbow. And each of those colors has a powerful frequency uh, connecting to a quality. So not am I just pure light, but each ray of that light has a vibration. The first one is that of peace, that of being pure and authentic, that of being loving, that of being full of attainment, which is happiness, joy, a deep sense of balance that I experienced of being completely free. Then the wisdom that comes with being me, authentically me. And with that ability to sustain who I am, I have power. So these seven qualities are the intrinsic nature of I, the soul. And this light that I am, is then filtering through everything I do. So when I'm talking, when I'm moving about, it's I, the living being, that is able to translate the vibration into the words that I speak, into the things that I do. And so when I begin to notice the things that I do, I can start feeling what is it that I give off. And this is another way of starting to connect with oneself. Um, just by creating that thought that I am peace, I am giving myself that understanding and authority that I don't need anything, but I can actually make place still and silent. And I can experience that stillness. So it's something for each one of us to think about that when, when I'm thinking about myself, if I can get all the paraphernalia of the things that I do out of the way. And I can bring my conscious awareness to the fact that I am the light within this physical body. And it's this living light that has the potential to generate peace and love and happiness and work from that space. What will happen is that not only do I find myself getting done what I need to do, but it has a more greater impact. Um, if I'm looking at somebody else as uh, being just a human, I'm also in a way trapping them in that moment just to be that age, that gender, and that profession. So I hold them back. So I'm also in a sense going to get only that out of that individual, what vision I have of them. But if I look at somebody with the vision that actually they more than just the body, they this amazing energy of living light that is peaceful, pure, and happy, not only will they do the job or whatever task that we are uh, doing, but they will give it that love and that peace. And so I get more than just that. So it's really, you know how there's a saying that goes service with a smile. So you get your service rendered to you, but it comes, in, comes with a beautiful package of happiness and peace and love. And when we can live our lives with that kind of intention of always putting that beautiful energy of what I am translating into the things I do. Remember, whatever you give out is actually going to come back to you as well. So in the whole idea of willing, you know, having that power that I can make something become the way I want it to do by just creating that position, mental position of who I am. So in a room as well, uh, whether you when you have a lot of people that are just uh, talking and making a lot of like noises or whatever it is, and I'm finding it hard to actually um, get anyone's attention, instead of actually me shouting at the top of my voice, my voice is just going to get muffled with everybody else's noise. But if I actually become quiet and still and create a beautiful vibration or sense of stillness around me, it actually can bring people 
onto, into a state of peace as well. And that can actually quieten people down. And so it's nice for us to know that when I'm working from an energy inside of me, I'm also creating a powerful sense with determination to create an outcome that uh, will be beneficial to myself and to others. It's not a kind of thing that I'm doing where I'm controlling anybody. But what is important for us to know is that each one of us as spiritual beings, we made up of the same qualities. And so it's not that if I want to be peaceful, it means I'm pulling others into being uh, peaceful themselves. I create an atmosphere that pulls others into the very space that they themselves are. And so it's really beautiful that you can begin to attract to yourself the energy that you want without actually externally creating a force. So it's a very deep sense of power that we have. Uh, you know, even on a simple thing when you're planting uh, seedlings or you're doing any form of gardening, when you put those seeds into the ground, it's the energy that you put it with, the good thoughts that you give it. And every day when you water it, you give it a good energy. So the water and the sunshine, it's doing its work, but your vibrations of positivity is also creating a powerful impact on the outcome of the growth of that plant. And why I wanted to use that example is that this part of me is actually an invisible part that is present in everything that is happening around. But because it's invisible, it's something we can ignore or something we can leave behind. And so to further um, allow our intentions and uh, whatever we set out to do to actually become a real reality in our lives, we need to let the silent um, participant, which is the being, the living being that I am, become more present, become more focused, because when that being is more present, the energy of peace and love, which is coming from source, because I am the source of peace, I am the source of love, and I'm the source of happiness, then that energy is going to start doing its work with all the practical things. So I think it's really something important for each of, each of us to, um, to give attention to this um, part of me that's the being, that's the light, and um, look at that light through the different things that I do and let the vibrations of that light, which is purity, peace, happiness, love, power, flow through everything I do. And from the most daily routine task of waking up, brushing your teeth and having a bath and cooking a meal or creating an assignment, doing jobs that you need to do, everything can actually be um, wrapped up with this special touch of the vibration that you are, which is peace, purity, love and happiness. And when you constantly busy yourself in making sure that everything has the touch of peace and love, it's actually taking away the burden from the things you have to do. It becomes in itself a motivator to make you do more because when you give off peace, peace comes back to you. So another way of strengthening that will in us to continue doing is to make sure the method we're using is always increasing our energy rather than taking away from us. And so when I'm weak, working from that source of valuing the true me, then whatever I do becomes much more easier. So before we close off, uh, Sister Devendri, any thoughts you want to add? I'm just uh, checking if there's any comments on our chat that needs to be responded to. Uh, now, just to reiterate, the, what, well, a few things struck me from what you shared, but this whole aspect of our usual mode of thinking actually being a learned behavior, <laughs> you know, it's something so important to realize uh, because actually I'm just thinking that it, it shows that my conscious uh, choice is in a sense then sort of uh, diluted 
you know, if if I'm just in pulled into patterns and learned behaviors and things. And uh, thanks for that exercise because that was a perfect example of how to do the opposite, you know, of where I am now consciously choosing what to think. Uh, rather than allowing myself to just be drawn into learned behaviors and old patterns. And uh, what you shared about when we consciously choose our thoughts, that is how then we actually consciously generating the type of feelings that uh, are really us. Because I think when we're not uh, choosing our thoughts and we just pulled into learned behaviors, the feelings that overcome us through the day are uh, old feelings. And uh, it takes so much of energy to get out of those feelings. So um, what was very sweet is that um, there's such a huge difference between uh, just having the information of who I am authentically, even the spiritual knowledge of me being a soul, in comparison to experiencing and feeling the the qualities of being a soul, because only when, like you shared, uh, only when I have that feeling, then I can start to really value, you know, um, that authentic self. And yes, um, we are going to be engaging in action, but the difference here will be that it's working from the inside out. And uh, just touching and coloring and um, spreading those vibrations wherever we are and whatever we're doing, uh, whichever quality of action. So uh, thank you very much. I can, I can see how this whole session can really allow us to roll out those intentions and manifest them uh, with the vibrations of the authentic self. So it doesn't just become uh, another external accomplishment. Yeah, thanks. Because so often when we, when we have things we need to do, um, if it's the old pattern, then boredom sets, sets in. But if we creating and making the choice of choosing each time, then I'm creating and creation is very powerful and it's sustaining as well, which, you know, it'll help me. Uh, feel special and good so somebody is just asking quickly um, please know how long this program is going to run I'm now here okay so this program will continue um, uh, for the whole month the specific one on world power but the morning program will continue um, as long as we we're experimenting with it but we'd like to actually make it a regular activity that we offer a morning program from seven o'clock in the morning till 8 30. But our presenters, uh, Sister Pratiba will perhaps share a little bit more of all of that later. But uh, to kind of round up our little session on world power, I'd invite you now to, there's a beautiful song that we've selected for you to reflect on. And it also gives you a beautiful uh, insight on how it is that I look at myself. Um, so let's uh, take a moment and go inside.
my family did I am not the voices in my head I am not the pieces of the brokenness inside I am light 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 I'm not the mistakes that I things that cause me pain I am not the pieces of the dream I left behind Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sister Usha and Sister Devendri. Um, I think I'd like to leave.